Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So, a very rare rainy day out here in Wyoming. So, I think it has rained probably less than 10 times since I've been here for the last two years. So, definitely a rare occasion here. But, I figured today I'd do something different. I would hop in the tundra, fire it up, and just take it around the block and give you guys a kind of that POV look, POV feel. So, with that, we'll jump right in. I'll show you guys. You guys are familiar with this thing here. Oop, I can get, zoom in on it better. It's an AJT design key fob. We'll, we'll have that in the pocket here. We'll hop right in. As you guys know, it is a keyless entry. And forgive me, it's gonna be a little loud with the with the rain. But let's hop in real quick. <coughs> Oof, it is really raining. Okay, it is raining pretty good. All right, as you guys know, just uh, push the start right here. So, for those of you who don't know, the, the Tundra here is my daily driver. Um, obviously, when I got the FJ there, that, that was my daily driver really for the first couple of weeks. Um, but however, as many of you guys know, I did end up selling that one there, this, this FJ there, um, because we got that one over there now. So, this one, because I... It is sold. I already have a holding deposit from the buyer. He's coming from out of state. He's kind of waiting for a coronavirus stuff to kind of die down a little bit. But once he does come up, I will hopefully be able to register that one over there with the DMV. The DMVs here in Wyoming are closed. Uh, there are ways to make it happen. It's just a little additional headache, a little additional mailing and all that. So I figured in the meantime, I could be patient and I could just right around in the tundra here instead. So there's the rear view camera here. It's flashing, I know, with this uh, with this camera here. So we're really been back to daily driving my tundra here. And it's been great. Hopefully the, the rain noise isn't too, too bad here. So what you guys are witnessing is, <laughs> it's really rainy. You guys are witnessing the primary reason why I do not drive my Shelby GT350R too, too often is because it's just, it's not very conducive for the, uh, the extensive gravel driveway that I got here, gravel and dirt driveway. And if you guys are familiar with the uh, the Shelby GT 350R or 350, uh, hey, yeah, 350R, I believe. I don't think the 350 has them, but they have this Michelin Pi Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires on them, and they are extremely a sticky compound. So they're raised tires. I mean, this was on the GT3 and the GT3 RS Porsches, right? Uh, one of the best racing compound tires you can get. But because of that. They pick up every single pebble, every single rock possible, and it throws it at the side of the vehicle. So, because of that, I mean, the fact that I'm a little OCD as it is, I have never, uh, well, I haven't driven it much. I've driven it a handful of times since I've had it. But so, I'm definitely eager to get to my next location so I can uh, hopefully not have a two mile long gravel driveway and enjoy it a little bit more without totally ruining the paint. But yeah, so as you guys know, I do have the, the Nittle Ridge Grapplers on the Toyota Tundra here. Um, they are extremely quiet considering today's not the best day to be doing a POV drive video with you guys just because <laughs> obviously the rain, hopefully the rain noise isn't picking up too, too much. Um, but yeah, you guys aren't going to be able to get a, a true sense of what that road noise looks like with these tires. Um, but very minimal. These are a hybrid tire. And they're specifically designed 
um, with that in mind, you know, that the design of the tread, um, the tread pattern was specifically to reduce road noise. So that's pretty cool. Um, when it comes to, you know, how they handle in water and how they handle in the rain, how they handle snow, I haven't had a single bad issue with them yet. So I've experienced them in every condition at this point and they've performed very, very well so far. So definitely happy with that. So talking about, let's talk about the interior for a second. So I mean, it's a little, uh, it's a little dark in here. Let me open up the sunroof. That might help out a little bit, but, uh, Personally, I'm a huge fan of the interior. It's a very simplistic design, as you guys know, but that's why us Toyota people like Toyotas. I mean, there's not a whole lot to go wrong with it, not a whole lot, not a whole lot to break. Um, so definitely a big fan of the design of the interior. We'll get it on the road here. So the rain is definitely loud. I hope it's not coming up too, too bad within the, within the audio here. So you guys can see the, the fake hood scoop there. It doesn't really impede your line of sight too bad. Alrighty, well, I'll get on it here so you can kind of hear that dual TRD catback exhaust, which I think sounds amazing. It's definitely an improvement from the Raptor. So we'll, we'll get on it here in a second. So pretty good rumble to it. That is uh, certainly an improvement over the Raptor. The, uh, the Raptor definitely had more of a synthetic sound to it with the, uh, the twin turbo six cylinder. So definitely an improvement with the sound. Um, not to mention it feels good just to have a, have a V8, have an engine that actually fills up the engine bay. Um, I know I kind of me out about that in previous videos, but it is a big deal. And as many of you guys know, Toyota recently announced that they are doing away with their, their V8. So the V8 is already kind of a thing of the past, or will be here in a second. So the fact that I have kind of the last of the, the dying breed here, um, you know, that makes me even even prouder owner of this Tundra. So, I mean, personally, I, although you guys can maybe see it down there. <laughs> so there's my average fuel economy. I know it's kind of maybe flickering for you with the camera. Um, for the record, it's not flickering like that in real life if you see the flicker down there. Um, you know, we're averaging about 13 miles per gallon. And that is a large reason why Toyota is doing away with this uh, engine, just because it's, it's not it's not economical at all. It's not smart for, uh, for the company to continue doing that, especially the way the future looks, right? Uh, what the future holds as far as uh, economic standpoint from a, uh, emission standpoint rather so 13 miles to the gallon uh, now keep in mind you know with these larger Nitto Ridge grapplers on it you know that probably took away a mile or two miles per gallon that I would typically get right that by itself another maybe small maybe a small component of it would be the the altitude here in Wyoming so the Wyoming here and where I live is 6600 uh, feet above sea level so even higher than Denver, higher than the Mile High City, um, but nobody really thinks about that much when you think about Wyoming. So we're pretty high up here and that obviously will play some role, some factor in the, uh, the fuel economy. So realistically, I think, I mean, the starting point for this vehicle uh, is right around anywhere from 15, 15, 17. That's where you're probably gonna average more often than not. However, I have heard people who, you know, have gotten um, you know, have reportedly gotten, you know, 18 plus in this uh, on a regular basis. Granted, they do not have 
these, um, you know, 295, 295 size tires on it. Um, you know, they have the stock Michelins that kind of look like gar garbage, but, you know, people have reportedly gotten pretty good fuel economy with these. And my stance on it is you do not buy a Tundra if you're trying to get good fuel economy. And if even if you meow about that and you complain about that, it's just, it's not a vehicle that you should even be considering if, if you're talking about it, in my opinion. So, uh, if you want a good fuel economy, there's other options out there. Uh, there's other options that are gonna have nicer, interior, in nicer interiors. And it's kind of dark in here with the tinted windows. Um, yeah, but that's just not why you buy the Tundra, right? You buy this Tundra for the reliability. I'm okay with getting that fuel economy down there if it means comfortably driving with peace of mind for you know, a quarter million miles up to a half million miles, right? If Will I do that with this vehicle? Probably not, but I do like the peace of mind with it. And I love the peace of mind that yeah, I'm, I'm likely never gonna be stranded anywhere. I never have to have this in a shop while I have to, you know, the inconvenience of having to repair a vehicle. Uh, that's pretty good peace of mind that you don't have to deal with uh, with the Tundra here. So that probably wasn't the most ideal day to do a POV drive for you guys, but I wanted to at least provide that to you. I do have a GoPro. I'm just kind of working out the kinks with it now, so you'll be, you'll see more uh, more footage with that here soon. But really, just kind of wanted to walk you through this. I'll pop out, pop into the rain real quick, and get into the garage and just kind of wrap up the video with a with a shot of the Tundra. Um, but again, you know the fact that Toyota is transitioning to their their six cylinder twin turbo with you know 400 horsepower is going to be a better performing uh, engine by all means. It sounds like, but I personally love the fact that I'll have one of the last V8s uh, within the Tundra. I think there's there's a level of goodness to that, and people who own this truck they know how awesome this engine is, even if it with the poor economy, fuel economy. So we'll turn it off. We'll walk through the rain real quick. I'll probably be loud for a second. We'll wrap up the video. <clears throat> Alrighty guys, well there you have it. Personally, I, mean, I love the, the headlights on this. I think it looks great. And I've said in my previous videos, um, I'm actually a bigger fan of the front end on the Tundra here than I am on of the actual Raptor from the front end. I mean, obviously the, the side, the profile of the Raptor, side profile, the wide hips, fender flares, I think it looks better overall. But the front end itself, I think is a is a better look. It's a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a mature look, if you will. Uh, so I am a fan of that. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, appreciate you watching, as always. And until next time.